Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Room for Discussion. Today we are at Stade de France and we're at the Sustainable Innovation Forum, a side event of the COP21. Ruben, tell us what we're going to do today. Yes, we have a lot of interviews planned today, beginning with Wayne Sharp. He is the founder of CDX Exchange, uh, that is an exchange market for carbon credits and emission rights. Well, so Wayne Sharp, I'm the uh, chairman and founder of Carbon Trade Exchange. What I realised, my previous business, Buttercard, was a business-to-business -business exchange platform. So I understand how businesses are motivated. At any given time, we had over 100,000 businesses trading on that exchange. And we operated in 20 countries. So, and businesses' motivations are similar everywhere. So even if they want to do something environmental, they don't want it to be difficult, otherwise they may not do it. If it's costly, difficult to do, or takes a lot of their time away from the business that they're actually engaged in, they may not do it. There's too many obstacles. Our purpose here is to build more liquidity and build more, more volume. This is, you know, yes, I really care about saving the planet, but I've got to make money doing it. Uh, following on that, we have Michael Girard, who is a uh, professor at Columbia University of Environment and Law. My name is Michael Girard. I'm a professor at Columbia Law School in New York City and director of the Sabin Center for Climate Change Law. I'm also the chairman of the faculty of Columbia University's Earth Institute. I teach courses on environmental law, energy law, and climate change law. And the center that I run tries to develop legal techniques to fight climate change, to develop information resources for use by lawyers and judges and academics around the world, and to train people in the use of these various legal techniques. Um, there is certainly growing consciousness around the world about the importance of dealing with climate change and quite a few countries have adopted uh, laws on the subject. A problem is that it's all subject to domestic politics. And so as the politics of one country become more or less favorable to regulation, those, those rules can change. In Canada, for instance, for several years, the uh, national government did not want to do much about climate change, but they've recently elected a new prime minister, Trudeau, who does want to act, and so he's moving uh, very aggressively uh, on that front. Australia recently had a change in the Prime Minister. And, and so it, it, you have a lot of variation from country to country and also sometimes from year to year. And last but not least, Lynn Scarlett, the Managing Director of Public Policy of Nature Conservancy, the largest NGO in the world. Happy to be with you. I'm Lynn Scarlett. I am our Global Managing Director of Public Policy with the Nature Conservancy, a global conservation organization. So we, we uh, for many, many months leading up to this effort, we've been focusing on what we want to accomplish here, and we have four key goals. Uh, one, of course, is just to really emphasize what we call a new narrative, that addressing climate change is not about constraints, it's not about costs, it's about opportunity. Um, what is going right is this is the first time we have over 150 countries putting commitments on the table that actually yield real reductions. So if you'll remember, prior to those commitments, we were more on a trajectory of 3.7 degrees Celsius increase. So that's major success, and I think we ought to celebrate that. We recognize, though, not good enough, and that's exactly why we want that forward momentum. Something in the agreement that says, great, good down payment, this is moving us in the right direction for the first time in a long time, but let's have something in there that says, say, in five, to, in five years, we'll take another look, we'll give countries the opportunity to ratchet up their commitments. So.